not that we be back online offering Sunday worship for broadcast. Well, welcome from St. Mary's Church, Gainford, to everyone online in our parishes and beyond. Thank you for joining us this morning. Before we begin our service on this second Sunday before Advent, I'd like to take this opportunity to give thanks for last Sunday's service and acts of remembrance in both our parishes of Winston and Gainford. It was as if we drew from the fortitude and sacrifice of those we were remembering and testified to the determination and strength of our faith in God, in whom there is no defeat. Well, as is permitted by law and national guidance, we have a broadcasting team today comprising our church wardens and our children's church leader, assisting with our reading and leading of prayers and who are our choral group as well. Peter and James are helping with the filming and Brian is on the organ and Clavinova. Well, let us begin our service. If you are familiar with the prayers and responses, do join in wherever you are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Well, let us pray the prayer that prepares our hearts and minds. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we can all see it. Let us confess our sins together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to praise God together in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect the prayer for today. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so now we're going to listen to our first reading, and Peter will read to us. A reading from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them. As labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. For it is as if man going uh, for it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. 
enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you are a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This period before Advent is also referred to in theological terms as the Kingdom season. Well, next Sunday we celebrate Christ the King. Our Gospel readings during this time feature Jesus' parables about the Kingdom of God, which is why our reading today begins, For it is as if. Jesus told parables that are stories that challenged his disciples to think about being part of God's kingdom and what that means. But before we take a closer look at our parable today, I encourage you to think about the character of God that you have heard or experienced by faith. Consider God's relationship with you and the evidence of God's presence in the world. I have a few favorite hymns that describe my experience of God. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. There's no place where earth's sorrows are more keenly felt than heaven. There is no place where earth's failings have such gracious judgment given. And great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. And so, in Jesus' parable, a man entrusts his property to three slaves. Now, of course, in Jesus' time, his earthly time and before, households included slaves. But that's a topic for another time. The man entrusts each according to his ability. One, five, another two, and another one. And each slave does what he considers appropriate with what has been entrusted. Two of them were fruitful, doubling the original amount entrusted to them. But one buried what he was given, so that according to his reckoning, 
he could be sure of returning it to his master. But did you get the feeling that the whole tone of this parable shifts as we hear from that one slave? Here's what he said. Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. Something in that explanation that was given does not hang together. The slave says he was so afraid of his master that he had to hide what was given to him in the ground. And yet here he's standing face to face with his master whom he said he was so afraid. And he tells his master, you are a harsh man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. He tells his master that not only is he a harsh man, but he's also a fraud and a thief. Should not the other two slaves have been even more terrified since they would have had far more to lose. And in fact, was not the master's action unusually generous since he could have entrusted his property, his money, to his children or his servants? So had the other two slaves recognized their master's generosity? Did they realize that they were honored, empowered, and liberated by their master's gift of responsibility and trust? But then Jesus concludes his parable with a harsh instruction. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What, I ask, is Jesus saying here? Does this vindicate that slave's view of his master? In a discussion among clergy colleagues about this very part, many were shaken by it and wondered what Jesus was revealing about God's kingdom. Well, yesterday, I received a little video called The Seven Wonders. It seemed to have nothing at all to do with this gospel parable, yet it enlightened me. See if it does you as well. Here it is how it goes. A teacher asked her class to identify and vote on the seven wonders of the world. Now, after much debate, the children voted and agreed. The Grand Canyon, the Taj Mahal, the Pyramids of Egypt, the Great Wall of China, and so on. But one child had remained silent and very thoughtful. So the teacher turned to her and asked her, is something troubling you? She replied that the question had brought her elsewhere. She said, there's so many wonders, but perhaps the seven wonders of the world are to touch to taste, to see, to hear, to feel, to laugh, and to love. And so it is. 
when we read Jesus' parables. That is our relationship with God and our personal knowledge of Jesus that enables our understanding. It is our experience of life in Christ that, like the child whose wonders were to touch, see, taste, hear, feel, laugh, and love, that reveals and affirms what it means to belong to the kingdom of God. And we heard in our first reading what St. Paul wrote about his knowledge of God. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. In a while, our choral group will sing the offertory hymn, I Cannot Tell. And in it is a stanza that proclaims, and this I know, he heals the brokenhearted and stays our sin and calms our lurking fear and lifts the burden from the heavy laden. For yet the Saviour, Saviour of the world, is here. Amen. Those who are here are going to stand with me because we're now going to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we're going to be led by Jeff in our prayers for others as well as for ourselves. Good morning, everybody those listening on the broadcast as well as those who are here. It is a great privilege to be here this morning, I must say, and an even greater privilege shortly to be able to uh, um, sing to you, um, even if some of the notes are, as my late father-in-law would have said, bum ones. <laughs> um, our prayers today are taken from the daily prayers during lockdown, which we are using uh, at four o'clock or thereabouts each day as the, as the bell is rung in the church, which you hopefully will hear. When you do hear that bell, you will know that someone here is praying. Our prayers on Mondays are for colleges, children and young people. And we pray for all those involved in the shaping of young lives. We give thanks for the sacrifice and commitment of teachers and all those involved in serving children and young people in education. 
We especially pray for our own schools here in Gainford. Those, our Church of England school, and those schools in the neighborhood where the other children go. We pray that all might be nurtured and cared for, and that every needful resource would be made available, that all lives can flourish even in these difficult times, and that no one would be overlooked. We're particularly asked to pray today for the children of Lesotho, our twin diocese, where the schools are closed due to coronavirus and other difficulties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On Tuesday, we are asked to pray for the elderly, the isolated and the vulnerable. And we echo God's commitment to those most at risk of this virus by praying today for those who are particularly vulnerable and isolated, praying for their deliverance, protection and comfort. We hold before God those who care for them, both physically and spiritually, that they will be strengthened and encouraged in his work. We pray particularly for the people of the Philippines and their present difficulties and dangers with flooding. On Wednesday, we pray for, pray for business. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. On Wednesdays, we pray particularly for businesses, for the workplace, and for our economic well-being. In this time of great challenge, we pray for the economic well-being of the country. We remember before God those who face great uncertainty in their work. We lift before God those who have lost their jobs and face an uncertain and difficult future. We pray for a renewed commitment to our common life together. And we pray especially for all our local businesses that they may be supported in these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. On Thursday, we pray for the National Health Service and for all other key workers. Our God is the great healer and the agent used more than any other is the National Health Service. Today we voice our gratitude for those who serve this country in the National Health Service and pray that God would prosper the work of their hands, that they would be encouraged in their continued work of sacrifice and care among us. Especially we pray for our local doctors and hospitals. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. On Friday, we pray for national and local government. We pray for those who are in positions of authority with responsibility for decision-making at national and local level at this difficult time. We ask that God would give great wisdom, deep commitment to all and right judgment. And we pray for our own government and the government and people of the United States of America in these times of difficulty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. On Saturday, we pray for all who are grieving, all suffering from physical and mental ill health. Lord, the one you love is ill, said, they told Jesus in Gospel according to St. John. Mm. We bring to God all those who suffer in body, mind, spirit, or with grief. Mm. We, ask they, we ask that in God's great loving kindness, they might know his sustaining presence among their pain. We pray for those who are stretched beyond their own capacity to cope and remain hopeful that in the roar of these waterfalls, God would bring a sense of coherence, comfort, and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And on this Sunday, as on all Sundays, we remember that it is the day of resurrection. Yes. And we praise God for the gift of his son in the words that Peter gave us in his epistle. Mm. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope mm. through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. Mm. Amen. Amen. We're going to share the peace. And wherever you are, this is for you, as well as those in our broadcasting team. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, as of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of God be always with you. We're going to now receive an offering in the knowledge that although you are not inside the church as a gathered congregation, you continue to offer your money, time and yourselves in many ways in love and service to God. We're now going to sing our offertory hymn, I Cannot Tell How He Whom Angels Worship Should Stoop to Love the Peoples of the Earth. I Cannot Tell.
Thank you, Choral Group. I'm forgetting that just because it's broadcasting, it doesn't mean that I should forget to sanitize. And so, our communion. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, he shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, Send your Holy Spirit, that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and blood. And those who are present can sit as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. No. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Our broadcast team is invited to receive communion in one form. The bread they receive has been covered throughout the service, and I shall administer communion masked for mutual safety.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. big thank you to our broadcast team. It's always a challenge, um, but we hope that many have joined us, um, whether live streamed and then later when we upload onto YouTube as well. God delights in our desire to worship him together in faith and love. Next Sunday, we worship Christ the King. And once again, our service will broadcast here from St. Mary's Gainford at 10.45 with our congregation all online and supported by our broadcast team. Just a few brief notices. St. Andrew's Church is still a construction site. So for now, I hope you are blessed by services online and by our newsletter. St. Mary's Gainford is open for individual prayer on Wednesday afternoons and I will be in church for an hour from 11 a.m. If anyone would like to sit with someone in person, if you, you don't need truly any other reason to come although we could chat or pray if you wish. Our prayer, as Jeff uh, mentioned earlier on, is said at 4 p.m. in the afternoon every day in St. Mary's uh, during the week, and a bell is rung for a minute. Lastly, we thank everyone involved with the windows for Advent in Winston and the bake for Christmas in Gainford projects. And so, the blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. <laughs>